Good enough, welcome to Russell Heritage Golf. Today, Lynn's back. Um, it's the third lesson. First lesson, uh, shaft was basically too vertical. Second lesson, we kind of worked on a better hip rotation in the backswing. Kind of preempted in the last lesson, but the possibility that she would end up swinging and potentially a little bit too shallow. So it'd be interesting to catching up with her and seeing how we're going to basically progress. If we have a little look um, at this, okay, so we start at the bottom. So, you know, in terms of distance, you know, decent sort of distances um, and, you know, carry obviously in the sort of conditions and all the rest of it. So, you know, that sort of side of it is, is very good and, and that's not really what we're after at this moment in time anyway, is it's not all about distance. Um, when we concluded the last lesson, I kind of suggested in the, the end of that video that the conundrum that you're going to face is you're going to become too shallow, which basically means that you're going to end up being kind of slightly what's known as underplaying. So it wasn't going to be that difficult for you to, based on your backswing position, draw the ball, yeah. the, the, as we can see here. So the kind of curvature to the left kind of just insinuates the ball is moving from right to left and we're tilting the ball. Um, and then we can kind of see that, that you got into a bit of a pattern and then we see a couple that moved off to the right. So if we kind of go back onto the ball flight, you can see the dispersion, generally pretty good. A couple off towards the right, a couple off towards the left, and we can see the last kind of few you've hit off to the right. So that's kind of the problem that a golfer has, is that if you become excessively kind of shallow and you're not massively going to manipulate the club face with your hands, um, you're going to be just as vulnerable now missing it off to the right, sometimes off to the left. So this, you know, obviously what I'm trying to say is it's much better and you've kind of, for the right reasons, given yourself a slightly different problem. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, so, what's happening from a video golf swing perspective is um, posture and things fine. We draw a line on the back of the hips as a reference. I am doing this freehand, so there'll be a bit of wobble. But um, first move, yet yeah, you get the hip back, yeah. And then as we conclude, we see the way that we kind of still come out of posture. So we still end up kind of turning a little bit flat. This sort of transition, because you've been quite conscious of playing. Um, that's what I mean, you end up getting under. Yeah. So you end up kind of underneath playing too much really. Um, and then you manage to release the club, you know, depending on your time and on the back of the ball. So what I'm suggesting is um, we need to work on the backswing a little bit more. We, have to, we need to have a slightly different approach to how you're turning in towards that hip. Um, and then we need to start opening up. I think the backswing is such a drastic change, exactly. I mean, that's perfect. I just think you're going to have to have an awareness to a load in that right-hand side. The difference is as you transition is you've got to stay downward facing and open up your chest more. Yeah. Yeah. Let's try a couple more. Mm-hmm. The backswing position, like I said, I think because you just become so conscious of that and trying to get this weight pressure, I just think you were turning too flat into it. So I don't think that's such a big thing for you really. I think that you can just feel like you're turning slightly steeper in terms of the shoulders into that leg um, and you'll be absolutely fine. Now, for the benefit of this video and for others as well, because obviously we are focusing on the driver, is if anybody's ever uncertain in terms of, or even yourself, Lynn, is uncertain as to, okay, should I be down here? Should I be up here? But the feelings are going to be different. What will always happen is that when we go into posture and we focus on the kind of pelvis area is that obviously once we go into posture, it's going to be downward facing. So when we swing back, the pelvis should be downward facing. Now, whether an individual creates a huge amount of extension or whether they stay more in a state of flexion is up to them. You know, kind of where we are, I suppose, is exaggerated this way now, right? But the reference that you should always have is if you drew a line vertically, which I'll use as that cane, if you draw a line vertically through your lead hip, uh, sorry, lead ankle or hip, um, and then you swing up to the top and pause, there should always be an angulation away, right? Do you know what I mean? So if you're kind of ever concerned that you're going back to this, you can't, the pelvis can never afford to move horizontally. It always has to stay downward, which is why there should always be an angulation between, do you know what I mean? Between the hip and, and where the hip and where the pelvis would be located comes to the driver as it is with the full swing what had happened is that because we, we changed the backswing position and also obviously after working on this you've got so much more space is that as you're coming down the first move really is your kind of shoulder goes up so that the, the the reference really for the golf swing now is um 
is your lead shoulder is going to give you the relationship of the hits. It's the same as like an analogy of throwing a frisbee. If I was going to throw a frisbee fast down the range, you'd move that way. If you move this way, it's going to inhibit your release, isn't it? And that's kind of what it looks like. It's kind of like going back, shoulder goes up and behind you, you get caught in the plane, and then it just depends how much you time the hands as to what goes on. So the thing that you've got to do now, and what I'm trying to relate to people that would watch this as well is, okay, there's different ways of moving in the backswing based on physicality and all the rest of it, but the key thing is you never want to compromise this, okay? Equally, you've got to stay in posture, so you don't necessarily want to go too flat either, right? So a great reference is always to use a chair and um, from a face on perspective to make sure this is pointing down. From there, what we've now got to do is whilst trying to stay in posture, is to turn. And the reason why we're doing that is because the shoulder then can move back across, which is going to help the delivery back onto plane. Do you know what I mean? And then the difference for you now is it's going to feel like you've gone from this extreme back into this extreme. But as long as you can stay in posture, then you should have a happy medium between all the above. Yeah, so that's perfect, isn't it? So you've turned to 90, that suffice. We can see the way the pelvis is stayed downward facing, you're in posture. And if you don't mind just holding that for a second, what I was also trying to say is that, um, oops, hang on Lynn, bear with me. Just get you back in focus. Um, and what I was also trying to say is that if somebody was to video their swing or, or look at their swing from a face on perspective, if you draw a line through the lead hip, this should always be angled away. Do you know what I mean? So that, that would always be angled downward based on the fact that the pelvis always has to stay downward in the golf swing. I know you've been holding that for a few seconds. Now what you need to do is not pull down with the club, but to rotate more your chest towards the target because it moves the shoulder that way. So what should happen is the shoulder in theory should be moving more down and left or back down towards your target because exactly you stay in posture. Which gives you a very different feeling again. Yeah. So stay there. So again, swing up, uh, that's fine. Slowly come down. Yeah, you'll feel pretty stuck, yeah? yeah. So keep turning, chest. Yeah, see what I mean? And then all of a sudden you can feel like, but the key thing is when you start to do this is that you've got to be really careful you don't pull the club down. So you have to kind of understand that it, you are going to be, if we just pause again at the top. So what's happening is you're moving the lower body, you're moving the chest back towards the target whilst trying to stay in posture. What that does is it influences the shoulder, doesn't it? So the shoulder starts to move back towards the target. The shoulder is inevitably going to move the lead arm down. Do you see what I mean? So you don't need to consciously pull the club down in the transition. Yes. Exactly. Now, the difference for you now is if you can just swing up to the top again one last time and pause, is I think when you practice, you should kind of be concentrating here. Do your best in the transition to get the chest towards the target while standing posture. Don't bring it down any further, then you would hit it from there as you're feeling. Because if at left arm horizontal, if I just replace you one more time, is if somebody was to practice and, and do what you were doing, you might swing up to the top and you might do this. But if you bring it down here, you're not going to have any leverage for any power, so it won't feel very powerful. Whilst if you can basically direct yourself like the throwing analogy, uh, the frisbee analogy by left arm horizontal, you could actually still down cock that and generate decent distance. But if you come down too much, your brain's going to be like, well, what's the point? So what we're trying to say is that it's very, very similar to the Frisbee analogy of what we're now doing with the body is that we have to direct our ability to swing towards where we're going, not up. And that's you. Yeah. So and then with most people that feel like, OK, you know, probably watch the channel. They're like, yeah, I can do the chair drill. Yeah, I can stay here. You're going to feel stuck. And that's why recently we've been talking more about the chest. So you feel like you keep moving towards the target. So it's not easy, but I would kind of go one, two, and then you can kind of down cock and get the club moving through. And what the difference will be is that the starting direction in theory will be straighter. The hit will be better, which will increase your ball speed once you get it right. Um, and again, you, you won't become as dependent on timing as opposed to getting caught under play. There we go then. That's kind of Lynn's journey so far. She's kind of somebody who was, um, not necessarily rotating great in the backswing, coming down too vertically and then kind of hindering her ability to deliver the club as best as possible. To somebody who was then trying to focus very much on the rotation of the backswing, they're getting caught too under plane. 
what in essence I'm saying is one of the most powerful mechanisms in the golf swing is a down cock, which is the relationship of basically down cocking the club, and that's how you're going to generate a lot of club head speed. The problem that you're going to have as a golfer is that the thing that governs the movement is the shoulder. So similar to Lynn, if you kind of start swinging this way and your first move is to come up, then you're going to ha end up having the wrong sort of delivery. And it means that you're going to end up having to slow down to time an element of flick coming into the hit to hit the ball straight. So what we've kind of done in today's lesson, hopefully you understand, is the idea that you swing back, you get the feeling like you keep your arm up in the air as you rotate because your shoulder is basically redirecting your ability to then down cock the club so you can swing it on plane and still hit some pretty straight shots. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Um, step by step guide, gonna create a playlist for it, it'll be on the channel. Um, yeah, we've kind of done three of those so far and one of those is the concept of plane. So hopefully as things go moving forward, if you're kind of new to the channel, you're not too sure what we're going on about, there'll be videos that are kind of documenting these reference points so that you can kind of catch up really quickly. Remember, it's absolutely free to subscribe. Uh, if you're gonna do so, you might as well press the little bell icon because videos come out pretty much on a daily basis and you don't wanna miss them. So press the little bell icon, that means you receive notifications every time a new video comes out. Catch up with you soon.